Hi there, welcome to Wallpaper Figures, providing you with some simple solutions to your wargaming problems. Today we're going to talk about cornfields and how to make them as realistically as possible so they look good on the battlefield. Specifically, today I'm going to be talking about 15mm American Civil War. You can use this technique for 28mm, you just make them bigger. Um, this started as I was just bored a couple of weeks ago at a weekend and I was watching the old Ken Burns Civil War documentaries which are absolutely superb and if you're new to American Civil War or interested or not there's still a fantastic series that I highly recommend. And part of the reason I was doing that is we've just sort of introduced Pickett's Charge Rules by Rice Fitz Press from the Two Fat Lardies uh, into Penarthen District War Game Society. Uh, that's my club down in South Wales. So I was sort of prepping up for that as well. And I got to thinking about cornfields in the American Civil War, or if you're in the UK, I'm talking about maize fields, not wheat fields, which we call cornfields. And especially, you know, at the Battle of Antietam with the Union attack on the Sunken Lane through the cornfields. Now, I've never been happy with the look of a lot of cornfields out there. You get that stubby, crappy black, green, dark green plastic, which is nothing, really, if you ask me. Uh, some people use the Christmas trees, and they look okay. Just not for me. And you can now buy ones by Bush, B-U-S-C-H. Uh, who are rail, who do railway stuff and individual ones but they are damn expensive and I still think they just look so, so plasticky compared to some of the rest <coughs> excuse me so I looked for inspirations in the materials in my jungle box and came across something in there that although not perfect I thought would look great on mass. so these are going to be about 30 millimeters high too tall maybe for 15 mil figures but when you look at maize fields even modern ones and old ones you know they're they're way up here they're eight ten feet tall even i'm six foot seven that's about two meters even i would struggle to be seen in one of these cornfields and um, so i think they're gonna look great on mass and this is what we're aiming for so as you can see this is uh, some pictures i took as we were going along uh, so I'm going to use them for my 15mm and also I might have a go at some 28mm ones for when I do sharp practice American Civil War. So let's get started and at the end I'll show you some nice eye candy of them actually in battle. Hope you enjoy. Remember as we go along hit that subscribe button and ring my bell and you'll get all the updates from this channel. Okay let's take some foam board. Uh, this is 5mm deep. Uh, you can use thinner if you want. Uh, whatever you got kicking around. Uh, this is why we're using foam board because most of have us uh, have a bit of it in the house and it's easy to get hold of or foam core if you're in America. You can use 2mm MDF like the one I showed you but this is just a bit easier. Now we're going to use a one inch square as our sort of base combination measurement simply because my ACW troops are based on one inch square of bases. That way you can make a combination of 2 ball, one 4 ball, one etc however you need to move them out of the way and that's the idea to get the troops through. So we're going to start by marking out the bases. Apologies here, uh, with the light on a ruler and my dodgy eyesight, uh, it proved quite a bit of a task to do this so I did cut and do it at one side. So just mark out your grid, don't use the end of the ruler because that's where I've worn so your measurements are inaccurate. And always use two lines top and bottom to do a straight line. So that's crack grid, so let's speed it up a bit. We'll do the perpendicular grid. Remember which side is your reference point to measure from and rotate the foam board so you don't get caught out that way. Mark your two lines and then we'll join the dots on those ready for cutting. And mark out the piece you're not going to use because it's not the right measurement. Okay, fresh craft knife, fresh blade, Nice and sharp, simple cuts, don't try and go through all at once. Simple layers will get it through nice and easy, especially when you've got a fine bit like this. Obviously, get an adult to do this for you if you're below, what, I don't know, 16, whatever, or dodgy with knives. Cut your combinations, I like the 4x1, 2x1. 
Right, so there you go, loads of bases in different combinations. So let's get stuck into this. We're going to take two 2x1s two and a 4x1. Uh, going to be a bit adventurous there. So for the actual corn, I'm going to use a plastic aquarium bamboo plant, which I got off eBay. It's not quite corn, but the angular leaves work well enough for me. It has wire through it, which helps. It looks good on mass. I've seen the old Christmas tree bits, and they're not for me. We'll treat these to make these less luminous green, and I could get the burner to take off the flash like you've seen me do before. But right now, let's just get these built and do a bit of speed. Now, obviously, they need to be cut down. They're too long for 15 and 28 mil. Good pair of snips as we're going through wire. Take the long stalk off the bottom. And I do these by iron. It's not a measure. Three pieces will generally get out of these. Take it down to sort of the axis of the leaves. It's a bit of guesswork, but it's a good natural look on it. So I'm going to cut these up and be right back. Right, we're going to need some moulds for the stalks. So take a pin vise, smallest drill bit, just big enough because the stalks will push through nicely. Don't drill your finger like that. Just rotate it through easily, it will go through that top cardboard. You don't need to go all the way through. You can do that and you'll probably have to do that if you use MDF. I found about four holes per each square section. Okay, so we need a bit of a small interlude here. I was hoping in a process to do the basing and then get outside to do some outdoor spray scenes. But unfortunately, the weather defeated me. Uh, and when it was nice, I didn't have any little helpers. Uh, my sproglets that could help me uh, when it was when it was dry so my apologies there you will see that in the painting I paint the base of finished corn uh, basically I had a mad for completely foobar week uh, when I was filming this I had a rush job for four sets of jungle starter sets which I had to get done in two days uh, plus in between taking my daughter fishing which she loves to do and trying to get ready for a Rank Civil War game that I was organising on the Saturday so it was completely bonkers. Uh, what I would recommend doing is you do the basing first uh, before spraying the actual plants. This way the sand glues to the foam on the outside and helps protect it. The spray paint when it goes on then bonds to the sand, helps it stick completely and also provides an undercoat, even if it is green because uh, you can easily paint over that. But the principles are the same and you may want to do it that way or you may want to do it the way I've shown the video and complete the plants then stick the sand on and then paint it uh, but that's entirely you on, on to you so on with the corn baby let's go so these possibly these I'm crap at this um, are the paints we're going to use uh, two of them are Halfords which is a auto parts place in the UK I love their camouflage paints they're fantastic uh, so we're going to use the brown camouflage, which obviously I've accidentally oversprayed this, had it too close previously. Ultra matte, give it our base coat, um, so you've got brown underneath. Then we're going to hit it with an uh, ultra green, then you're going to hit it with just a bit of, bit of gloss. It doesn't matter that it's gloss green, because uh, we're going to matte varnish at the end of this anyway. Uh, I sometimes hit it with, like I said, I've got a matte desert sand colour. Uh, that gives that sort of edge of sort of 
dying bits that you get when it's right when the corner is ripening. So, those are the ones we're going to use. So spray those in succession, let them dry. Then what I usually do is hit it with a gloss paint, a gloss lacquer, and then a matte lacquer, just to seal it on it. It's not perfect because of the type of plastic it is. It could still come off. It's a bit like old Airfix. So that's what you do for the foliage. And like I say, if you've already based it, then that's sand protection. So if you have a look here, this is what I'll do. That will actually protect the sides of the foam from the paint um, propellant which can melt them. Okay so on to actually basing and painting the bases. Okay as I said before you can do these stages either way. I did um, put the base on afterwards first of all but I would recommend putting it on now simply because it will help protect the foam board and provide a base for later painting. So, we're going to take some wood glue, you know this is my favourite, it's really strong and quick drying. Some of my general mix, which all of it you can find in the store, wallpaintfigures.com. Take some glue, water it down slightly, lay out the grit, make sure you've shaken it, and then start applying the glue. Make sure you get plenty on the edge of the foam board, because this is going to protect it from the propellants that when you spray paint at a later stage, as you saw me describe in the introduction. Get it all between the corn stalks, and just check it's applied all over. You can touch it a bit later. Get the sides in and the ends first, easy to do that pick up where sort of I was holding it and it's shake it all through and job's good one. so we've got that one we'll do the other two and come back okay let's start off with a simple dark earth from coat down to do this gonna water it down slightly um, as I said ignore the fact that this is completed <laughs> um, it's what I have to hand while well, the other one is drying Obviously I recommend um, you put it on before you spray paint the foliage and that will give you a, a base to paint from and an undercoat anyway, which is a lot easier to do. But lately on, get in all your nooks and crannies, don't worry about getting it on your fingers. Okay, going to take the old makeup brush because these are really lovely and soft and we're going to use a bilious brown paint from Coat Darm again. Any sort of mid brown, your Vallejo middle stone or something like that would be fine. If you've got a different paint scheme you like to use to match your bases, use that instead. Next thing we're going to do is just apply a final one and for that we're going to use Foundry Base Sand, shade A. Uh, don't need a lot of this, this should be your finest dry brush and as usual I'm not washing the dry brush out between the coats. So next thing we want to do is do the stones and for that we're going to use my favourite which is Shadow Grey. Pick the stones out individually like that. Uh, and make sure you don't have to get them all and then we'll use an Ash Grey. Now this is the only on a few army painter paints I'm still going to continue to use and only in a sort of dry brush terrain type way because it's a useful colour. Just dab that on top, don't need to dry brush because you'll just get it on the rest of the base. Uh, sometimes I would use an elven grey or a light grey, on this one I'm not going to, I don't think it needs it because it's going to be in the middle of a cornfield. Uh, but that's your base is done. Okay, so let's crack on. So take some wood glue, and you're going to need the old flock box for this, or something similar if you've got it. We're going to pop some wood glue there in the old tray. And what we're going to do is try and catch where the corn would normally be. So right at the top, and this is why on some of them I left a little bit sort of proud there, because that can function as a corn. The other place where you're going to have it is in the axis of the leaf. So try and do a little sort of bit further down. Otherwise, they're going to look a bit like sunflowers too much. Uh, which they do a little bit, of course, close up. So that we can continue until all of the glue is applied in those places. And you're actually happy 
with what you've got there. Don't be afraid to blob it on. And if you catch a couple of leaves, that's okay. They're sort of thin palmate leaves. So, you know, they're going to look a bit like corn. This isn't for close investigation. And it's not supposed to be 100% accurate because you just can't do it, unfortunately. Okay, so what I've got in here is 2mm Hayfield stroke golden wheat. A bit of a mixture of both in there. I'd prefer something a little more yellow, but this is what I've got and it serves its purpose. So I've got a steel tray on the top of the flock box, makes it easier to get the grass on and to give yourself a nasty shock and to give you a close of my hairy arm. But there's the finished product and I'm very happy with that and I'll carry on. Okay, so I hope you like that. Um, as you can see, it is quite effective on mass. I'm going to be building a shed load more of it for the battles because there's a lot of cornfields as well as wheat fields, uh, which I've used the old matting for in American Civil War battles. Obviously, if you've got any questions, bang them in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button and all that jazz. Uh, ring my bell if you want to get notifications. Share this out if you think someone will find this useful. If you're interested in any of the other stuff we do, which will help support this channel as well, such as our modular jungle train, which I spoke about right at the beginning, then the links are below there, along with links to our Facebook page, which I do live broadcasts on, Instagram and Twitter. But otherwise, have a great day, have a great weekend, and thank you very much.